This is Chapter 9, Competition and Monopolies, Discussion Number 2, Imperfect Competition. So what about industries that don't have a lot of producers? Well, we consider them to be imperfect competition because they're going to, there's going to be some control over how the industry interacts with each other. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is what is a natural monopoly. And this is where a government entity, just like the federal government, decides that there's only going to be one or two producers or suppliers of a particular good or service. And this is based entirely on the concept of economies of scale, where certain costs being spread over many different people, this can be efficient even though we're lacking in competition. An example of this would be the telephone. When the telephone first came out, there were tens, I shouldn't say tens, there were several companies in one city that would have telephone companies. And if you wanted to be able to connect with several of your friends, you ha may have to have four or five different phone lines coming into your house because your friends might also belong to a different phone company. This meant that there was four to five times more wires all over the town as all these different phone companies were wiring everyone up. Not exactly an efficient way. And so, as time went through, a lot of these phone companies were being bought out and the government said, you may go ahead. And even when it became long-distance companies, the federal government said, we will allow and encourage this natural monopoly so that we can cut down on the wires and that the company is producing good, cheap service. Now, with the advent of cell phone service, a lot of this has gone by the wayside. And before cell phones, there was microwave technology, and that kind of broke telephones' uh, hold on the monopoly of long-distance phone calls. Uh, that company became AT&T, but of course we know it has competition now. Now, there's also services that are entirely provided by the government itself, and this is referred to as a government monopoly. Uh, military, yeah, Walmart doesn't go around carrying machine guns. But a better example would be the U.S. Postal Service, which exclusively has the right to deliver first-class mail. So... That would be a natural monopoly. The Also, providing electric power through the Tennessee Valley Authority would be an example of a government monopoly. There's also the idea of geographic monopoly. Simply because you're an exclusive provider in an exclusive area, simply because there's not enough customers to support two of the businesses, or it hasn't been discovered as a way to expand in the industry. Examples would be like restaurants that are in way back in the countryside, that do not have additional uh, competition solely because there's just not enough clientele around in order to supply enough business for both of them to survive. Another way to maintain a monopoly in an industry is by technology. Remember that as people invent or develop new ways of using inventions, these are patents. Patents are a government's protection of a person's new idea so that they benefit from their idea instead of everyone stealing it and make money off of it even though they didn't think of it. The patent gives them the exclusive right to manufacture or to sell the invention for a specified amount of time. And then there's also copyrights. If you wrote a book, you would have the exclusive rights to be able to sell that to anyone who wanted to read it. And that, in the way, is kind of a representation of the technological monopoly because no one could steal that book from you and say, hey, I wrote it, I'm going to sell it. It belongs to the writer. So that is an example of a technological uh, monopoly. Now, there's also times where we run into an oligopoly. An oligopoly, is, you know, monopoly, one seller, for whatever reason, an oligopoly is that there are few sellers, but they do have a lot of control over productivity and prices. Now, because they have a lot of control that way between them, a lot of the times oligopolies will compete with non-price competition by trying to pr prove that their prices are based on a difference in what they are selling. New for example, if you're buying a car and the new snazzy buttons all over the place, 
new options. All of those are how an oligopoly tends to, those companies try to compete with each other. And it's also through service. However, what happens in an oligopoly is that those prices and or features tend to be mirrored by all the competitors because everyone sees what everyone else is doing. And so sometimes companies will talk to each other or they will see what other one's doing and there will be where producers will conspire to fix the prices and or the materials and or the features in order to help each other maintain their existence. See, if one company got really good, they could undersell everyone else, put them out of business, and then they'd become a monopoly. And so sometimes companies in self-preservation will say, well, let's not take the chance of anyone underbidding us. Let's work together. So this collusion, if it becomes an official work element, becomes what's known as a cartel. And cartels, as far as the government is concerned, because it squelches competition, is bad. Now, we have another type of industry which we call monopolistic competition. And the biggest difference between an oligopoly and monopolistic competition is that they're all pretty much selling the same thing, but there's a large number of producers in monopolistic competition, whereas oligopoly there's not. Because of the large number of producers, they do everything that they can in order to gain brand loyalty to their product. And as they gain brand loyalty to their product, that helps them have some influence over their market and their business. An example of oligopoly could be cars. An example of monopolistic competition could be fast food restaurants. So that gives you some ideas of uh, oligopolies and monopolistic competition. Includes discussion number two, imperfect competition, as part of the competition and monopolies chapter nine.